So we got a Toyota Camry. I think it's a Camry. Or not. Might be a Corolla. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the customer brought it in yesterday, and they had new struts and everything to replace it. Granted, it could benefit for some struts, but that wasn't the main issue of his noise complaint. So I told him it's going to need stabilizer links, and I finally got a chance to take them off and the stabilizer bar bushings. But, uh... So, you could hear that, and that's just me doing this you can only imagine with the load of the vehicle on it and you know all that other crap the noise gets amplified so that's a problem we're gonna go ahead and get these uh stabilizer links and the stabilizer bar bushings swapped and it should take care of it Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys this real quick. Here goes the new part we got from AutoZone. As you can see, it's ValueCraft. Uh, basically, the cheapest parts on earth that you can get for your car. Now, one thing I noticed here that's a problem is if you look at the stud right here and you put it where it belongs, you see how the diameter doesn't really match. And now you have all this extra play right here. So in my experience, no matter how much you tighten this down, this thing is more likely to start making noise way, way sooner than it should because of this. And if we grab the original part, now look at this stud and look how it fits in there. See that? It doesn't have the same amount of play. It just fits inside of there a lot better. So uh, yeah, this is what the customer brought me so it's what I have to work with. But really just stay away from cheap parts like this. Okay, so we got a Dodge Charger here and the customer complaint is a clunking, knocking sound while driving. Uh, it does sound like it's coming from the driver's side. So a quick inspection, we could see the bushing on this little control arm looks like it's uh, halfway pressed out back there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this lower control arm changed. Okay, so this is a little bit odd. It's the first time I've seen this. I went ahead and loosened this nut, and I'm trying to separate, you know, this piece. And all of a sudden, the ball joint actually pulls out of the upper control arm. So, uh, yep. Looks like we're going to need a new upper control arm. That sucks. Okay, so now that the lower control arm is out, we could actually see the damage. First of all, if you look at the new one, and then you compare it to the old one, you can see how far pushed out that bushing is. So, yep. Pretty easy stuff. But now we're gonna have to get a new uh, upper control arm. Yep, this thing just popped right out. So, all I did was take this little uh, spring off around the boot and it just popped right out. Look at this. Yep. So, I mean, in a way, it's kind of a good thing that it failed right now because this was about, this was going to pop off any day on the customer while they were driving. There's just too much crap in here. That's crazy. Rev up your engines. Sorry guys. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. But as you can see, we have a new upper control arm. So everything is all well now. I'll just put it all back together and this thing will be on its way. Crazy. Okay. So how long has, has this car been, not been running? a month okay so that's when i got this one okay so you saw me so it's been sitting here for a month for a, month. a suspected Ooh, bad alternator 
What's so we smoke? yeah it's coming from the alternator okay gotcha. so we just put a new battery in it to finally get it started up and it only ran for about what like 40 seconds and look at that alternator it's crazy okay yeah, so this is pretty crazy i think something's actually on fire here so i sent the lady inside to go get some water and just spray it all over this alternator i don't know what's on fire here this is crazy it's coming right out the alternator I hope she hurries up because I don't want her car to be on fire. Uh, yeah. So here we have that Dodge Durango again. I've already gone ahead and installed the new window uh, motor and regulator so the window now works. I just got to clean up all the residue from the tape. And also I got a few of the suspension parts in. So I'm going to end up doing the tie rods and the stabilizer bushings and... Well, yeah, the stabilizer bushings. So here you can see the ones that go on to the lower control arms. There was a lot of play in these. Here's a new one. And these are the ones that actually bolt up the, the stabilizer bar to the frame. So you can see how worn out this one is. Yep, this one was actually uh, pretty easy. So... So I'm just about done with this Durango. Uh, I can't remember if I put up a video on the stabilizer bar, but that is done. As you can see, we got a new CV shaft, inner and outer tie rods, wheel bearing on this side, upper and lower ball joint. So I'm just about done here. Just going to wrap it up and send it. Okay, yeah, so we got an 03 Mazda Tribute. Mazda Tribute. Uh, customer had no heater. You know, we're getting into winter time, so you need heat. Um, yeah, I started checking things one at a time. Came down to the thermostat, and I made sure to pull it out the car exactly the way it was ori orientated. And if you look, the bleeder valve is facing down. I pulled it exactly out the car just like that. So, you know, the air can't escape. It should be in the car. Like this. So we're going to go ahead and fix this thermostat, put it into the right way. And hopefully we get the heat working in this bad boy again. Okay, so even after fixing the thermostat, we're still not getting any heat out of this thing. So I started following the hose coming from the heater core. Uh, to the water pump and it's not even hot anywhere so I started following it even further down and it comes right back here and look at this so it comes from back there and this way and look at that kink right there so someone's been in here messing around and when I touch the hose look what happens yep So here's our problem. This is why we have no heat. Get that Mazda and uh, that hose down there. I mean, we had to jerry rig it for now, but uh, as you can see, it's nowhere near as a tight bend as it was before. So there's no more kink, and the customer now has heat in the middle of winter. So. Uh, you know, I told him it's a temporary fix, but we're gonna have to, uh, you know, get this done right. The most important thing is that he gets the, the heat working. He's been driving too long like this. But, uh, yup, it's a fix. I'm glad he's happy, because I know I, I'd be crazy in the middle of winter with no, uh, no heat, so. Alright, we're all done here. All right, so I just finished uh, doing the rear drums on a customer's car. Well, last time he was here, I noticed that this uh, rear brake line was uh, pretty much shot. I told him it's going to bust any day now. So he was like, oh, the next time I come over, I'll uh, bring, you know, the line. So he came over to do the brake shoes, but he forgot to buy the line. So again, he tried to push it off saying, oh, I'll do it next time. So anyways, I put the brake shoes in everything back together I get in the car to push the brake pedal to make sure everything's okay the second time I pumped the brake pedal 
the line ab actually ruptured right there. So now we had to replace the line and uh, bleed the system. But that's crazy. I mean, it just happened while it was here. It could have happened any other time. But, um, yep. Okay, so I don't know if anyone remembers when I put out a video uh, a while ago about putting packing tape over the serial numbers of these tools because the serial numbers just rub off so easily. All right, so this, these two right here are fairly new. But this is my latest tool that I got and I just looked at it today. And if you look closely, the middle section of that serial number right there on top is already worn down. Okay, this one is still intact even though it's a little bit older simply because I don't use this gun as much. But this one, what, maybe two months, if not even that. And look how the numbers are already rubbing off. So I went ahead and put packing tape over both of these. But this is the original tool that I put packing tape on. And it's it's been a while. Let's go ahead and look at it. And as you can see, it gets used daily. Now, look at that thing. So packing tape works. I got a 2001 Hyundai Elantra here. Came in on the hook yesterday. So the car's running now, it starts up and runs fine. But even in park, if someone tried to move this car, it starts rolling as if it were neutral. So let's go ahead and move it into reverse. In reverse, my foot is off the brake, the car's still not moving, but there's a noise starting to develop. I don't know if you could hear that, but it's getting louder. See. Hear that noise? So let's go back to park. Yep. Okay, so I just finished uh, recording that first video, and then it just dawned on me. Let's not be quick to uh, say it's a bad transmission and have this customer's car towed off to the junkyard because God knows they're not going to pay for a transmission in this car. So anyways, I just don't, that's really has the symptoms of a broken CV shaft. That's why when you put it into gear, you hear something spinning as if the car wants to roll, but it's not rolling. And then when you go to put it back into park, it grinds. Why? Because it's no different from putting your car in park while you're still moving. And that's because the CV shaft might be broken. So let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, I'm just making sure the flash is on, but let's go ahead and get a look in here. And yep, as you can see, <clears throat> The CV shaft is disconnected. It's broken. So that's the problem with this car. Uh, let this be a lesson to myself of don't believe what other people say because the tow truck driver uh, with his quick initial in, you know, inspection said that the transmission was bad. <clears throat> but obviously that's not the case. So uh, don't always trust what other people say. But yeah, I knew something sounded weird. Uh, right after I shot that first uh, video, I think something just not right. So, of course, all it needs is a CV shaft. It does not need a transmission. Okay, so we got an 01 Impala here, and customer is having issues with it starts up fine, but once you start driving for a while and everything just warms up engine-wise, all of a sudden you turn the car off, and then it will not start again. And they're suspecting a crank sensor, so he brought the car over with a brand new crank sensor, and that's what we're doing right now. I'm going to go ahead and get this one changed out and I'll keep in touch with him and see if the repair was successful since uh, there is, I didn't diagnose anything, I'm just changing a part here and uh, hopefully everything works out. Here goes that uh that Mercedes, the one that I went to the woman's house and uh 
you know as soon as we had it started this alternator was practically on fire so we got it towed in uh yeah as soon as you put the battery uh connection on this bad boy just starts smoking like crazy Sure does stink. Okay, so here we have the new unit. Um, yep, so uh, let's go ahead and slap this thing in here. Okay, so the good news is the alternator is in, and I've already gone ahead and connected up the battery, and there's no more smoke. When the old alternator was in there, as soon as you connect that battery, this thing would start smoking. So, seems to be okay for now. Oh, and these, uh, these wires right here, they were exposed. The wire loom was gone, obviously. And with this rough edge right here, I was concerned that eventually the wires might uh, rub through and, you know, cause a short. So I just grabbed some rubber hose, put a slice in them, and put them here to protect the wires. Now I'm not sure if this is a good thing to do because this is rubber and obviously the block gets really hot. So, I don't know, I, I guess I'm just going to keep an eye on it see if anything comes of it. But, I don't know, I tried something. Okay, so I got everything uh, reconnected. The belt's back on. Let's see if it'll start. This car has not ran in months. It's just been sitting there. Let's go check on that alternator. All right, so uh, the good thing is no smoke. Seems to be running good. Obviously I got the air box out of here still, but it's running. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check the battery voltage to see if this uh, new alternator is charging. All right. And yes, we are charging. Still no, uh, no smoke from under here, so everything seems to be good. I was concerned about the alternator at first because it is from Rock Auto. And uh, right out of the box, it was damaged. Like this plastic housing back here. Uh, looked like someone had already dropped it or they did something. And then where the connector goes, piece of the plastic where the connector goes is broken off. I mean, it still works, but that sucks to see right out of the box. Okay, so here I'm back with that Mercedes once again. Uh, when I was messing with the whole alternator and all that stuff, I noticed that this upper radiator hose is actually leaking right here, right where the clamp is at. I guess it like dug into it. Well, that's why this clamp shouldn't be here in the first place, but you know, even by squeezing it, you can see it's leaking. So I got a replacement. I'm going to see if I have a different clamp for this so we don't have to reuse this one but push comes to shove I'm just gonna have to reuse the clamp at least it'll fix the leak for now so the customer just dropped off this uh, Chevy HHR he wants me to look at it because it's been to other places and they shot the parts cannon are at it already um, it's got two issues going on uh, number one, it's got a link code, and they've thrown so many parts at this car and can't seem to fix it. Um, large evap leak. And another thing I noticed, well, I'm sure he noticed also, is long cranking times. It could take like 10 seconds to start. So um, I'm going to start with the cranking time and going straight to fuel pressure. And if it turns out we have a weak fuel pump or something's going on with this, you see where I'm going with the lean codes. All right, so let's go ahead and check this fuel pressure. Okay, so I've already turned the key once. I heard the fuel pump prime and still 
we got no pressure and the car hasn't been saying that long I pulled it in here it's probably been I don't know maybe like 15 minutes let's go ahead and turn the key one more time see if we get any pressure Let's try to start it. Okay, so first start up, let's see. Okay, you saw that was a long cranking time and it hesitated to start. Let's go check fuel pressure. Well, look at this. No wonder we have no fuel pressure. I don't know if you can see this, but the little dongle inside of there is missing. Ah, you dummy. So let's get a different uh, fuel pressure and we can see our actual readings now. Okay, so even though the car was just running, I connected this one and not a single drip of fuel came out. So, you know, let's go ahead and crank it again. Okay, so that was the fuel pump. Actually, let's go check it that it primed up. Let's see. Still not getting anything on there. Okay, so I just shut the car off, and as soon as you shut it off, you lose fuel pressure. So, uh, I want to get this on camera. I'm going to try to crank it right now. And there we go, you saw that for yourself. So this is why he has long cranking times. So I'm just gonna keep looking at it and maybe uh, start messing around with this large evap leak. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this before I move on. You know, when I saw the fuel pressure drop off like that and obviously, you know, we have a fuel issue, fuel delivery issue. My first thought is it's got to be the fuel pump unit because I think the regulator is built into it inside of the gas tank. But then I started thinking what if we have a stuck open injector? Well, I would think if we had a stuck open injector, this oxygen sensor would be reading rich. But it's not. On top of that, we have lean codes. And also, even if there was an injector stuck open, I don't think... An injector that's stuck open would drop pressure as fast as that fuel pressure drops off. So this is all. This is why I'm thinking it's a fuel pump unit instead of a uh, something, you know, like a stuck open injector. Okay, so I got the smoke machine up front going. I looked underneath the bottom where the vent valve is. I don't see anything, but I came over to the gas tank, or I should say the filler neck. But there was actually, uh, I saw some smoke pouring out of here, but if you look back there, so clearly his uh, evap leak has to do with the filler neck. Or the gas cap. Uh, this thing does not want to come off. 
You can tell it's like a cheap aftermarket one. Okay, so it's definitely not pouring. I got the cap off. It's not pouring out of uh, from behind the cap. It's actually coming from back here. So I guess uh, take this fender liner off and see what's going on here. So this is the type of crap I have to deal with every day. So whoever he was taking the car to, they were just throwing parts at it left and right. Obviously you can see the purge valve is new. So I tried to take off this side and I noticed there's some silicone right there. So I'm like, oh, that's not good. I can't even get this off. There's so much silicone on here. I had to fight to get this side off. And look at all the silicone inside of here. It's... Why? You don't know what you're doing. Just don't touch things. I just... Man, I just... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm about to call a customer right now. I really am. I'm going to call him and tell him whoever the hell you've been taking this car to just stop because it's horrible we got a 2010 Corolla here um, just another one of those cars that comes in with absolutely no oil customer is aware of the oil leak that's why they actually brought it over here they want the oil pan gasket replaced and the valve cover gasket replaced and I checked the boxes, it looks like there's also a timing chain tensioner for some reason. I guess that's what the dealer quoted, quoted her. So, uh, yeah, this sucks driving engines around with no oil in them. Alright, so I'm just about... Oh, yeah, that's how you know it's late. I'm just about done with this, uh, what is it, Corolla? Did the valve cover gaskets? Did the oil pan gasket, did the timing chain tensioner and its gasket as well. Um, what else? Air filter. I just have to add the oil tomorrow morning. And that's it. It's about 2 o'clock in the morning, so I'm done. We got the trailblazer here and a metal on metal contact with the brakes. And needs an outer tie rod. I have to get this. Yep.